dinner and reception yesterday. So we'll get to the meat of the talk here, extreme makeover, creating pathology reports that, that make a difference. So get a nice introduction. I'll just reiterate that I'm in a community practice uh, group, affiliated pathologist medical group. I've been involved with the College of American Pathologists for a long time, serving in a variety of roles. And uh, I've also have a close affinity to digital pathology and uh, a trustee of the American Board of Pathology. All right. My claim to fame, if I have one, is, are some books. I did the illustration layout for these books, including one on breast cancer, and then uh, the latest one, which is uh, an atlas on, on hematology. So I have no conflicts. I'm not going to be promoting any particular um, product today. But this is what I'd like to cover, developing and deploying anatomic pathology reports, use them to educate our colleagues, and uh, optimize patient treatment. We're going to talk about identifying distinctive elements within the report that are important to emphasize to build your practice and integrate whole site imaging and other technologies into uh, the report. All right, that's the goal, extreme makeover. So as I said, I'm in a private practice group predominantly in Southern California, but we cover multiple states, Arizona and up north in Oregon, and we have a reference lab. And this is, um, this is our box. We have uh, a number of uh, things we can put inside that box. That box measures eight and a half by 11. And uh, the things we put in that box are text and images. We put in some branding with our logo. We format it, add some URLs, barcodes, prognostic information, all those things and images get put into that box. And that is the center of the pathology, anatomic pathology universe for us. All right. And my pathology group has always been in search of what we call the ultimate pathology report. We want to make a report that is as compelling as we possibly can make it. And we've done a lot of things over the years to try and make that happen. The head of our pathology group, from an historical perspective, is Dick Ellis. He retired recently. Anyway, he's been at the forefront of putting stuff into reports, starting off with just simple drawings. They're not like uh, Da Vinci's at all from his notebook, but they serve the purpose. We then moved into Polaroid images and stuck those onto reports as well, just scotch taped them in, and that's how the reports went up on the chart. And then digital came around, and we added a uh, number of digital cameras. Uh, and we use this one for gross imaging, and we use this camera for taking microscopic images. We uh, had a machinist make a tube there that we could attach to the on top of the microscope and replace a 35 millimeter camera. So we were one of the first folks around to do digital pathology for microscopy. And we played around with a number of different printers and, and found one that, that made really good uh, digital prints for us. And these are some of the gross images that, that we create with this uh, system. And uh, Dick Ellis still makes reports, and he uses a comic book layout program where he can add these little call-outs, uh, texting, uh, text attached to the report. So these are the areas I'm going to cover today. Creating, formatting, personalizing, enhancing. We'll start with the creating part. Lots of different companies out there that can create, uh, help you create these reports. Certain is one of them. They have an ultra system. You should probably take a close look at that one. They have a number of modules associated with that report. These are the easy parts on a report. We have headlines, diagnoses, gross and microscopic. The hard parts, though, are these, putting images on reports, making um, uh, patient integrated reports, previous history, URLs, all those things are a lot more difficult than whole site imaging. So, we're going to talk about putting those into the report, but before that, there's some basics I want to cover, and that's probably, the, this to me is the most important part of the talk, is the formatting part of this. We all know how to spell, right? So spell check is probably part of what we would expect to find. Uh, punctuation is important. You know, it could save a life. Um, these reports, though, focus initially on just the content, right? Protocols, diagnoses, and such like that. But what we don't pay enough attention to is the formatting of that information, arranging it and configuring it so the user knows what we're trying to get across. And there are several papers out there that talk about how these pathology reports should be formatted, 
right? And there are four main elements that you should think about in design of reports. The layout continuity, diagnostic headers, information density and clutter, and I'll touch on these briefly. And here's an al a story that tells you why it's so important. So two years ago, there was a huge problem with the Academy Awards, and it tells you what why typography and layout is so important. You remember that Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway came up at the end to announce the best picture, and Warren read the card when he pulled out of the envelope. He hesitated, didn't seem right to him. Faye Dunaway grabbed the card, looked at it, read it, and said that the winner of the best picture was um, La La Land, which was wrong. And this is the card that she held up. It said Emma Stone, La La Land. It's a whole typography problem. The important header, the largest header, is not the important one. Everyone knows they're at the Oscars. You know, the, the uh, Emma Stone and the layout for La La Land are the same font size. And then finally, the award is the tiniest thing at the bottom of that report, all right? So this is the one that they should have pulled out of the card, which said moonlighting and da da da, and on the bottom it says best picture, all right? So if you look at the before, you can see how the mistake was made. Someone pulled it out, just saw La La Land, and they just read that. That's what Faye Dunaway did. But if you redesigned it appropriately, you'd see Best Actress, that's the main award, Emma Stone, the second biggest, and that's the biggest font size, right? And then what she was associated with, that is the design makeover that should have taken place. And this is even better to show it in color. That would have been easily identified as whether or not there was a mistake or not when the card was, was pulled. So think about that layout and typography when you're designing your own pathology reports. You th pilots all know that these six dials are the most important part when you're flying an aircraft. And those dials cover from fighter jets all the way down to Piper Cub. Those dials, they may be electronic, but they're all sort of arranged in the same area, so there's continuity there so that the pilot knows exactly where to look for a particular, if a particular problem happens. In pathology, we need to learn some tips from marketing and this layout thing. So here's an example of uh, a cola company who had this um, series of uh, posters and it showed someone, you know, what took a drink and then they're better and they used this in the Middle East, not realizing that many people in the Middle East read right to left. So if you read it right to left, <laughs> it could be the whole wrong message you want to give, right? So the order of the information is important. And it's, the order is important in the sense that you should talk about the most important thing first and then the least important as you go down, sort of a pyramid style, um, inverted pyramid. So the lead and then the most important down to the least important. That should be at the end, not the diagnosis at the end. All right, so here's the very first newspaper in the United States that was ever printed. And now we have newspapers like this, right? And like this. 9-11 just happened, just was celebrated or remembered uh, a few days ago. And we have another, uh, for autopsies, same thing, right? So uh, the headline grabs you, right? So how do we make that the most important part of the report? Well, in our group, we put off, we tried putting the headline in red and bolded and uppercase so it's obvious where it is. We then put boxes around it so people know exactly where to go for a diagnosis. And then we've recently added headlines, all right? It, just like newspapers that say, this is the important thing that's coming out of this report. It's a carcinoma, right? And why is that a big deal? Well, you know, there's a couple of papers out there that say, hey, clinicians are from Mars and pathologists are from Venus, and they don't talk to each other very well, and the reports don't communicate as well as they could. There's a 30% error rate in how that report is interpreted by your colleagues. <laughs> They don't read what you put in there. So make it as simple as possible for them. And our colleagues are busy. They have charts to file. They have things to dictate. It's just, it's, they're, they're, they're very busy. So I gave you this busy photograph and I say, where's grandma? And you'd be focusing on all the kids and not realizing that grandma's there, but it's down below, right? Okay, so you're not thinking that grandma, if that's a diagnosis, is, you know, you're missing the point here. All right, it's kind of like a where Waldo. Some of our reports look like this where where is the diagnosis? Where the heck do we need to find the pertinent information in that report? Um, 
It's there, but you just have to hunt for it, right? So how can pathologists help? How can we make our reports better? Well, we can do synoptic reporting, summarizing the case, which is like putting Waldo everywhere in the report. You just go to one place and you have all the information. That's one way to do it. Another is to make the report simple, right? So you have only one Waldo, there's only one diagnostic area, and that's the box that we've settled on, right? So we shine, a, we shine a headlight on that box, and that's how people know exactly what we want to communicate, all right, along with these headlines. And in our cytology reports, when someone comes in, uh, w when the doc comes in, the OBGYN doc comes in and reviews their cytology reports, their pap smear reports, you, they're in a stack, and they have many, dozens and dozens of them, and they have to go through and pull out the ones that are abnormal. So we highlight in yellow those that are abnormal. So the tech or the aide or the office staff just separates them into a stack that has no coloration on it and the other that has yellow when the doc comes in and they can just sort through the ones that are yellow. They know immediately which ones are abnormal that they need to refer and check on the patient. So we're giving them clues so they don't miss a case of CIN or something because it was buried in the dictation. All right, tumor boards, another example in which 29% of, of diseases were reinterpreted and treatment was reinterpreted after the case was presented and the pathologist explained what was going on, the clinician just hadn't read the report well enough, right? So that's, we wanna make it, as I said, as easy as possible for them. Then we can personalize the report. We can have all this ancillary material that we can pull together into a, like x-rays and other things that can go into a single report. Here's a, a company, a lab in Brazil that has some excellent um, integrated reports that they use. And Dean Wallace, a friend of mine, is gonna be talking about radiology and pathology integration uh, later on. We have organ-specific reports in which there's GI, derm, and heme variations on a single report. We have targeted reports. All right, this is the primary report as it might go out on the chart. There's an executive summary that says this is everything that you really need to know with the breast markers and everything all right there, all redacted, but it's, they just have to read that one page. We haven't done this, but we've talked about creating patient-friendly reports in which the patient looks at this and says, ah, your diagnosis is right breast invasive ductal carcinoma, but what the heck does that mean? And so the report says, what is ductal carcinoma? What is it likely to mean? What are the characteristics of it? These are the findings that, was, that were there. The pathologist signed it out, definitions. What's the role of the pathologist? So it becomes a bit of a marketing and explanation of what pathologists actually do to create that report. And as a, as, as a patient, this is a much more impactful way. We haven't done that yet, but I think com commercialism and consumerism is moving to something sort of like that. And Keith uh, Kaplan, who's in the audience, has talked you know, uh, in 2015, wrote a very nice piece on his blog about synoptic reports for patients. It's an excellent piece, I'd recommend that to you. We spend a lot of time on prostate. We have a 20 or 30 uh, urologist that send cases to us. We've developed our own uh, prostate report. It's uh, five to seven pages long. And the last two pages of this report are branded with the urologist logo, and that's what they give to the patient. And it has the treatment plan on there that they write in, and they also, the patient also goes away with a list of, uh, you know, what the heck their staging is, uh, what staging means, so they have something they can leave to know when that, that office to know what they are, they're gonna do next. And that's so important for a patient, because as soon as they're talking to the doc and they hear cancer, everything else you talk about is forgotten. And this, is something they can tangibly walk out the office with to help them. Other things you could do to personalize the report, some uh, you know, labs add statistics, so for a PSA score is embedded into the report, um, the uh, pathology report, anatomic pathology report. And what we've added uh, recently is we put our name on the end of the report, as well as our phone number and our email address. And that phone number goes directly to the office. There's no phone tree, and if I'm not in the office, it rotates over to my cell phone. So a patient, if they want to know about that report or a doctor, they can contact me directly. And I've had colleagues say, oh, I'm worried about that. That's not going to be good. I get too many phone calls, I get one a month. And it's usually a billing question. Who the heck is a pathologist and da-da-da? And that's easy to refer on to the billing company. But it allows that communication, that connectivity that's so important for patients to know there's someone there. All right? We haven't gone as far as social media, but, you know, maybe, you know, 
four or five years from now, we'll start adding social media buttons on the bottom of our reports. Okay, other ways to enhance it. We talked about gross and microphoto, microscopic photos. I can't tell you how important it is to add gross photos to the report. Um, too many pathologists ignore that. You're going to have uh, there's several systems out here they could look at. The Pathlight had a chance to review on the uh, internet and it has some nice features that allows you to take images and plug those into your reports. And there's more than images. Here's an example of a uh, hookworm in the stomach. And at the end of the report, we also included the, uh, from the CDC, an image of the um, life cycle uh, of that. So it has a little more piece of information that you might want to make the report look better. And then little pieces of data come in that are images that you might want to include in the report that aren't electronic. So we get endoscopic prints. Some, some dermatologists bring us their photos of the patient's gross lesion, and we scan those with a couple of, we have a couple of uh, uh, these portable scanners, and we just scan them and then roll that into the, uh, into the path report. And insert in here, you've got uh, the ability to add gross images and microscopic images as well. And what's nice about, and I learned this last night at the uh, reception, um, that uh, the, these reports are very customizable on the cert -in system. It uses HTML5 standards, which means you, anything that looks the way it is on a website, you can turn that into uh, that same kind of uh, organization on a web page. And here's an example. Um, this is challenging to do, to think about how you would get the image from a doc's office into your report, right? How do they get there? Well, Years ago, this is what our path group did. There's a camera called a Mavica, it took really good gross photos, and it had something you probably never, you don't see anymore today, which was a floppy disk. You take the picture, and the floppy disk was there, and uh, the doc would take the biopsy, take the picture of the gross lesion of the patient, throw that in with the biopsy, and send it on to our lab, and then we would just take the image off of the floppy disk, and that's how we got our gross images from the patient. And we built a website and stuff talking about dermatology and all that. Uh, associated with that for, for patients. But technology evolves, right? So we moved from floppy disks to apps and smartphones. And so we built our own app. Um, we call it Instapath. There's, if you're a dermatologist, uh, micro lenses and stuff are a bit, macroscopic lenses are available for these cam uh, cell phone cameras. Um, specialized ones that dermatologists can use are available. And we have a receiving application, and basically the image is sent via email to us encrypted, right? So the docs don't want to type in on their cell phone patient name and information or anything like that. So they don't have to type anything. All they do is click this button here, and it scans the QR, excuse me, scans the barcode on the requisition. So the office staff fills out the requisition. The doc just takes a picture of the barcode, that immediately means every image is associated with that barcode, so all of a sudden you've married the patient information with the image from the clinician. Then they hit send and the images get sent off to, uh, via uh, email to a Google account, all encrypted, and then uh, we decrypt it back in the lab. So here's our workflow. We've got a cell phone or a, a tablet. Clinician takes the picture. Um, it gets sent to uh, the, um, the lab which has a receiving uh, um, software, and it dissects out the image, adds in, we can add in a whole site if we wanted, and QR codes, all that stuff, I'll talk a bit later. Another interesting thing you might think of adding is more references. So docs always want to know what the latest and greatest documentation is, so we've added, you know, we, we're very big on adding references to our reports. We've got a database of URLs. Patients want to look up stuff on the internet. So we've got a list of uh, appropriate URLs that we've vetted that the patient could then go to and that could be recommended by the clinician for the patient to go to to learn about their disease, all right? We've also added QR codes in some reports. So um, we've experimented with QR code additions. There's three potential uses that we see in pathology uh, um, promotion and education and whole site imaging. The pathology promotion, we usually use this if you've got a new pathologist that's been added to the staff and that you click on, you uh, scan that code and it takes you to the web page of that pathologist. We've got a uh, video where the pathologist is talking about their, um, their credentials. So the patient has a connection that way. 
Um, in education, patients want to learn about what their disease is, so we have, as I said, vetted the URLs. We've got reports uh, that uh, CAP has uh, developed, and we've branded them with our own logos, and that, uh, those are PDFs that the patient downloads when they scan that code. Or there's whole site image links where that code can uh, be used to connect directly to the whole site image on our uh, image server. So the clinician can scan that code and they'll be taken right to the whole site image after they type in their, their credentials, all right? And uh, again, the, some clinicians want to review these cases with their, with their patient. All right, then we have branding, all right? This is my pathology group. I want to make us stand out from everybody else. I want to make our group as visible as possible. I don't want to go with the crowd. I want to be distinct. And uh, this is what we do, right? We, we uh, in our header, we put in um, our website, which takes us, we have a very nice website, I think, that talks about our pathology group and why we, are, we should differentiate ourselves from others. We're very, e we're very eager to put logos on for clients. That's a very big selling point for us. Uh, those clients can pick any lab they want, and we want them to pick us, and so we want them to be sort of a concierge type service for them. So we add on their own logo and information for those pieces of data that go out to the patient that the doc gives to the patient from the path report. All right, let's wrap things up, kind of a final report. So we've talked about pretty quickly designing these reports and all the different things you can put in to make the report um, better. Let's not forget the clinical lab. You know, so the software that Certain has is both anatomic as well as clinical pathology. So how do you make the clinical lab piece better, more compelling? Well, I thought this was interesting. A couple years ago, Wired Magazine um, sent out, uh, contacted uh, five or six different um, designers and asked them, how would you redesign this clinical lab report? So here is a C-reactive protein report. And what normally the lab uh, comes up with is this text that says this is the result and this is the normal range and that's it. But this is a very important test that has to do with your cardiac health. So the web designer looked at this and said, well, this is how I would design a report that would be more impactful. So it says this is the test, this is the result, where you fit among the continuum, there's a graph there, and then it says, what your, combines it with your cholesterol and gives you your risk, cardiovascular risk associated with that result. And then says, what do you heck do you do now to get it, if it's not good, you need to exercise, diet, all those other things. And that's the report that goes out the door. So no one's doing this now, but this would be a very impactful way to be proactive and engage with the patient to improve their health. Same thing for PSA. PSA usually comes out as a simple number. Patient has no idea what that number means, but if they had the report on the right by this lay designer, they say where they are, where their normal range is, what are the things they can do as follow-up. Much more impactful report. And certain, I would challenge you, you have HTML capability, you can design this. You know, it would be great. So, after all that, why do this, all right? Why put images on reports, all right? It's a headache, it's more work. I have, I have pathology colleagues that don't wanna do this, all right? They talk about liability issues. You have to put a picture on there. Is it not the most representative? You know, maybe I don't wanna, wanna do this, all right? So here's why. Two things I learned from my grandkids. <sighs> all right, I'm gonna talk about coloring books and lunch boxes. We'll do lunch boxes first. So, one of, the, one of the kids is going off to school and they wanted a new lunch box for school. And uh, I said, I'm gonna get him the lunch box that I got when I was a kid. So I was into space and all that kind of stuff. So I got them sort of the space themed lunch box. And he was so disappointed, his name's Boston. He said, what are you, Dad, your grandpa, what are you, I don't like it. I said, well, it's a, it's a lunch box. I mean, what, you know, it's, it's okay, right? He says, no. I said, well, what do you want? What kind did you want? He said, this is what I wanted. He wanted a SpongeBob lunchbox. And I said, well, it's a lunch, why, why SpongeBob? He said, Grandpa, the food tastes better when it's in a SpongeBob. And it got me thinking about this whole talk. And I said, uh, 
This is our value proposition. It's how we wrap up this data. We got a sandwich, we got coffee, whatever, biscuits. We put that in a lunchbox. And how that lunchbox looks makes a difference to our clients, right? We could do a bento lunchbox. Think about that, okay, bento box. This is a nice lunchbox, right? This is how the food is laid out in the bento box. Same nutritional value, it's just packaged a bit differently. Little rabbits cut out of carrots, got nice rolls there. And compare that lunchbox with the others that are out there, that US Labs and Sonic and LabCorp and all. You know, all of a sudden you've created some value, extra value with the same amount of data in there. All right? So you gotta think about what is your value proposition to your lunchbox, your pathology report, how you package that information. So what do clients want? They want the right diagnosis, of course, but they want it to be easy to read, they wanna be able to digest it, they wanna have integrated reports, one stop, and they want images, right? That's sellable, it definitely is. The second thing I learned from my kids is um, they love the color. This is from many years ago. And uh, I learned that uh, it's okay to color outside the lines. You know, push the envelope. Do something that other kids don't do. And that's the why, the second why. And here's an example for that. We sent out a client sur survey from our lab to all of our clients and said, simple question, do you give your patients the pathology report? And two-thirds of them said, yes. I make a copy and I hand it to the patient. The patient leaves with your, with the pathologist's diagnosis as they go out the door. So pathologists are gonna, I mean, patients are gonna judge you by that report. They look at things on the wall and decide, hey, this is a good doctor or not a good doctor because they have these diplomas and fancy looking documents on the wall. So you go into a wedding and you get this invitation. Hey, Bobby Jane and Bobby whatever are gonna meet behind the barn and have a wedding and that's the invitation. So that's one way to package the message. But there's another more elegant way. It's the lunchbox thing, the bento box, where this is the image that would be much more enticing for folks to come in and go attend the wedding, all right? Patients are lost, they're confused, they're perplexed when they get a path report. It's a maze of information, right? If you did a sound cloud of that report, it's very dense, a lot of data there, all right? Um, they see the word cancer and they're worried, they don't know what that means in terms of them specifically, what treatment. So pathology report should be more of a roadmap to what should be, how these patients should be treated. We should be like the Google Maps of medicine, that's what pathologists should be. And uh, Keith, um, it's gonna be talking a little bit about uh, AI and things, but I wanted to point out something that he told me in a talk uh, a number of years ago. And he went to, he goes to Starbucks and there was a bunch of ladies he saw at Starbucks having coffee and they were all talking together and he um, overheard something about cancer, breast cancer. And he introduced himself as a pathologist and he said, every one of those ladies, turns out it was a group of cancer survivors that met for coffee every month or so, and they all had their path reports with them. They reached into their person, they pulled out their path report, and they asked him for information about that. They had questions about that report. And what a great opportunity to interact, right? Because the report was confusing. And so my whole tenor of this talk is mostly to say, try to make that report as less confusing as possible. All right, you hear more, more from Keith later. So think inside the box, what can you do? Don't be afraid to color outside the lines. So tired, diagnosis in all caps. Inspired, put the diagnosis first, it's the most important. Put the diagnosis in a box, but maybe you should put a headline on top of that box so people know, cancer, you know, breast cancer. They know immediately what that report is talking about. Synoptic data, or maybe better would be put in prognostic data. Molecular data, we put in references, UR codes, uh, QR codes and URLs, it's more modern. Ancillary data, addendums, make it an integrated report, put pictures on, but maybe think about whole site images or even video links, make it much more powerful. And then the next version of path reports are gonna be 
hopefully like this. We've got a final diagnosis, but instead we're going to talk about disease mechanisms. Instead of prognostic information, we become predictive in our reports. Instead of genomics, we're going to talk about phenomics. Instead of generic, it's going to be much more personalized, personalized medicine. Instead of a report that says, what is it? Surgeon did a case, took out a tumor, and you say what it is. You're going to tell them not only what it is, but what to do next in that PATH report. All right? We talk about therapy and prevention. So to me, this is the report of the future, all centered on pathology. It's going to link to the EMR. It's going to have um, all the stains needed. It's going to have whole site image scanning. It's going to have genetics. It'll have uh, links to the whole site image. It'll have prognostic information, maybe AI, which we'll hear about from Anil and others, and Keith. And they'll have molecular information and the next, and treatment options that are there. If I were a patient, that's the report I want. And that's the report to rule them all, and that starts with pathology. All right. So to close, I'll just say that uh, we started off at the beginning of this talk with a clean sheet of paper, and that has edges. You can color outside the line, but you're going to end up coloring on the table or the things around it. But you can do things with this report. You can change its shape. You can make it more unique, more interesting, and make it more connectable to patients. All right? So think about that. We have edges that we need to work within on this report, but we can do so much more than what we're doing now. So try and make your reports better. Make them make a difference, and your patients will thank you for that. All right, I'll stop there. And uh, I'm not a great artist, but I do steal, and so I have some sources here. Colleagues, uh, Al Louie and Dick Ellis and Anil has been helpful, and Keith Kaplan, Dean Wallace, Tom Groden, and other folks. Peter Hamilton, who's probably the reason I started off here, because uh, he invited me two years ago to, to this place. And Elaine and her team have been just phenomenal. Thank you very much. All right.